out. We have going to be so much posing, so much pouting. Hey guys, you're watching Heavy Petting All Stars. My name is Paras Soma. Today, everyone is posing for a cause. We have not one, not two, but five celebrities for you on this very show. So, let's go bow wow. Oh, don't forget the pose. The World for All calendar is a fundraising venture by the animal rescue organization World for All in Mumbai. In their fourth edition this year, the calendar captures celebrities and their reasons for why a stray. Well, to get the answers to that, we may have to wait till the big release of the calendar. But that didn't stop us from getting a sneak peek into what went on behind the scenes. Hey everybody, this is Vivek Obroy and I'm in the World for All Why a Stray calendar. Hi, this is Arunodai Singh. Hi, this is Kalki and I'm in the World for All Why a Stray calendar. Hi, I'm Erica Packard. Hi, I'm Siddhant Kapoor. Hi, this is Mandira Bedi and I'm in the World for All Why a Stray calendar. They came, they strutted, they posed and in the midst of all of that we found out about their greatest love affairs and how it all started. Well, my first pet was a parrot <laughs> when I was in school. But the first uh, dog I had uh, was um, well, after I got married. My husband also loves dogs and so we got, uh, um, I actually got for him a small little black dog and I, bought him in, I got him in Delhi and I brought him home. And um, well, there's this memory which I can't say is a favorite, but it's a very strong memory uh, in my mind. I'll never, of course, I'll never forget the dog. His name was Buster. And um, he was very old and he was ailing. And um, this was when I was many, many months pregnant. And I remember our vet actually had said to us to put him down. But both my husband and I didn't have the heart to, to put him down because we said, we're bringing a new life into this world. We can't take away a life. And we just, you know, we looked after him the best that we possibly could. And I was having a C-section and the day, and actually we mourned him a couple of weeks before he actually did go. But the day I left for the hospital, the morning I left for the hospital to have my baby, I sat with him for a few minutes. I petted him and I said goodbye to him. And I went to the hospital to have my baby. And Raj, my husband, broke the news to me that he, he died half an hour before my son was born. So I would like to believe, he was my dog. So somewhere I believe his soul is still with us and I think he's, he's Veer. <laughs> he's my son. Well, uh, dogs are like babies and now that I have one of my own, I know it's not like you have to put aside that much time for your little baby. You've got to, you've got to just find time. You've got to give love and that's how you get love. And honestly, um, more than babies, dogs give it back unconditionally. <laughs> so I, I make time. I think uh, my first pet was a dog and uh, she was really, really adorable uh, and uh, even though we lived in an apartment back then before we moved to the bungalow in Drew, um, it was because it was a small dog, uh, it kind of used to, we used to have growing up, I think I was six, I think, yeah, I was six, uh, she would be the center of my universe and um, spent some really, really special years with her. I remember coming back home and uh, dumping my bag from school and the first thing I'd do is just go and meet her and play with her. So it's like, it's a, a pretty ma amazing relationship. I've always had an amazing relationship with my pets and they've always uh, been in my life for long periods of time. I think uh, it's really difficult to figure out a single favorite memory with a pet because uh, especially uh, Sir Duke and Lady Ivy who were in my life for 14 and 13 years uh, respectively was such an important part of my life and they shared, you know, everything with me. Um, and uh, those were the single days. And I remember the kind of, uh, you know, conversations that sometimes you want to have with a friend. Um, I used to have with them and it might sound crazy, but I really, really felt, and anybody who has dogs would know, I really felt that they understood me, you know, and I don't know how, but they understand. Like, I remember uh, Sir Duke, he was so cool. He just be so sensitive to if I've had a bad day and I would just be exhausted and sit there and he'd just come and he'd place his big jaw right on my lap and just look up with those puppy eyes at me and it would just make me smile no matter what you know so I think um, they know how to make you feel special.
I think kids growing up with animals uh, uh, teaches them so much in terms of how to express themselves, how to love, um, how to not uh, harbor fear. Uh, you know, it's, it's a common problem. Uh, people see, I see kids who are petrified of dogs. I mean, they see a dog and they want to walk on the other side of the street. And, um, and I think that uh, if it starts early, um, you know, you don't have that kind of problem. My son has quite the reverse. He's crazy. He loves animals. Um, uh, you know, any kind of wildlife and especially the dogs at his nanny's house. His nanny lives in a really big home and she has some uh, four dogs and they're all and twice his size. He's barely learned to walk right now. He's a year and a half. But you can see him holding their tails and running behind them and you know, he just, we have so many pictures of him just, you know, when they flop down on the floor when it's hot and they're lying down to catch a breath, he just goes, squats right next to them and then lies down on top of them. And it's, it's, it's pretty incredible to see that. It's, uh, it's quite adorable. Well, I grew up on a farm, so I've had animals my whole life. From My father rescued a couple of deer that somebody shot their mother. So we had those and I was very young. I'm like five or six, I think I remember. We had dogs my whole life. Uh, I'm allergic to cats, but I love cats. So my sister rescued a little kitten. Uh, so she was very cool, except she'd make me sneeze like crazy. My favorite pet was this really large fellow we had called Leo, who was a bunch of different things. And nobody really knows what he was, but he was big as a house. And I used to be in boarding school in Tamil Nadu in the south in the hills. And I used to get bullied a lot because I was a lot tinier than I am now. And my mother came to live with me for about a year. So she brought Leo up as like, you know, because pets are emotional support. And he went everywhere. My, my favorite memories of him would just be going on like hour long treks just to find him. And he'd always come home. He would never be lost. He would just, he would make me see more of those hills than any student in that school just because he couldn't understand why you would stay in one place. It was amazing. So if you go up the Cody Canal till today, the most beautiful strays you will find are all his line because he impregnated everything. It looks like Ladakh there because there's these giant hairy strays in Cody Canal and they're all Leo's kids or grandkids. So yeah, I went up recently and I saw like two that looked just like him. So, and then the owner of this hotel called Astoria and he said, Aapka hai. So I said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very cute. My first doggy was a doggy called Foxy when I used to stay in Andheri and uh, she's a stray and she's a, we called her Foxy because she looked like a fox and whenever, no matter where my mother, whenever my mother came home and she had this certain whistle my mom would do which I can't because I'm so bad at whistling but she would whistle and Foxy would come running from God knows where in the colony and come running home to us so yeah, that was my first doggy My first doggy was Spike actually when I was really young, I was about 6 or 7 uh, yeah, and uh, did not know like how a dog really behaves, you know, for the first <laughs> time when you were young. So I was a bit scared. Uh, but yes, I, after that, my love for dogs have just like it's like flawless. <laughs> I love dogs a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I feel at home when I see her. Like that's the magic of being home. I think obviously your mom and your sister, but like her is like I go to see my dog. I tell my mom also. Yeah, yeah even I'm me. Mom, but Wake up Dutchie. I don't want her sleeping when I'm there, you know. <laughs> I go to my house to see Shiloh. I yeah. have a doggy named Shiloh and he's around two and a half and he's a big brat, yeah. He's so naughty. He's very naughty and he's and amazing. He not, like, he's so naughty and the dog is like naughtier than him and both of them together it's like chaos at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, I, go quite, I, I actually go home quite often to see him only. Yeah, yeah. go to see a yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, uh, my grandpa called me home and he's like, I think Dutchie is having her babies since my baby, my baby was pregnant. So I was like, oh. he's like, what? And no one was at home and my grandpa was really old then. So I was like, really, really, Dutchie's having her baby and we got to go home. So we went and she was under my bed because she always goes there. Like, it's her spot of like feeling secure and, you know, no one can get there. And we looked down and we're like, has she had anything? And then we saw this sack that was... Yeah, they come in a sack. So basically, I was... I was the I was the only person over there because she was freaking was out crying, and crying. Like, yeah. I was crying. Like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So I was alone. <laughs> so um, Duchess was under the bed and basically every sack had a baby, of course. So she was. They were in these plastic. In this plastic, and, and they came in the hand, and then we had to give it to the mother to, like lick it and off, you know. And she could. So I basically I was sitting there, and, 
and like, I was she hand. was giving it in my hand and I was giving it to her and then she would not let anyone else come next to the puppies except, except me him. and like no one like I was like it was and then uh, my mom then obviously we took the puppies and we cleaned them and no one came home my mom was at yeah. work so she came home after 2 hours yeah and then we were like oh my god Eight I was puppies. like I fell in love with him again I was like oh my god you gave birth to like my puppy. I didn't give birth I helped yeah, give him birth, give birth. to uh, <laughs> uh, so basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, eight eight puppies, uh, two hours, and then the ninth puppy came, came out, out in the shower. shower when <laughs> when shower, she was like having a bath, and suddenly uh, the last one came, Buruk, and all lived, you know, mm. all of them, all lived. of them lived. Yeah, some, that was quite a special yeah. memory for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've had pets throughout my childhood. So I had a lot of dogs when I was growing up. I had this one huge dog, uh, and. Uh, he was uh, very furry and uh, black and white in color and his name was Leto. I guess uh, my favorite memories were because I went to boarding school whenever I came back from boarding school uh, my dogs were the first to greet me they would like come to the car like before you know anyone else and they would like run over and jump all over me so they, would, they were bigger than me because I was really small at the time so they'd push me on the on the grass and we'd be playing so uh, that's good memories. I have a stray myself. Uh, I have a cat called Dosa, uh, which I found on the streets of uh, Bandra. Uh, unfortunately, I travel a lot, so I miss my cat a lot. Uh, but when I'm here, when I'm at home, then my cat sleeps with me in my bed. <laughs> He's my constant companion. Uh, you know, whenever I'm watching a movie or reading or anything in the house, then he's on my lap. I mean, he's he's actually a dog. You know, he's very needy and loving. You know, they say cats are not so needy, but he's like super needy. <laughs> Alright guys, time for us to head into a break. When we come back, hold on to your knickers and your banyans because the dreaded rapid fire round is coming up. Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching Pedigree Heavy Petting All Stars. Alright, we've got two ladies with us today, Ruchi and Tara, who are like the awesome, cool people who are helping all the animals out. So, <laughs> first of all, I like the whole idea of the calendar and the celebrities and of course all the animals together. So quintessential question humanity has been uh, you know flummoxed by this what came first the chicken or the egg what came first the NGO or the calendar so that's, that's kind of a tricky question because uh, we started the NGO we really didn't have much when we started so we thought of a fundraiser and that's how the calendar came about okay so that's it, it is the chicken and egg question with uh, the calendar and the NGO as well because our first calendar is what kind of laid the base for the NGO in terms of our funds in terms of where we could go with that and uh, yeah, it's kind of been like our signature commodity ever since then and uh, it's evolved every year. We started with something very basic and I think it's just, it's gotten better every year. We have interesting themes, we have interesting people, so yeah. So it's only getting better. So, and Tara obviously has the beautiful job of making sure the celebrities are like working it out of all of the <laughs> celebs. Who is the one who literally just dotes on the animals? You know, everybody who's been involved in the calendar, we did this last year as well. Uh, everybody on the calendar has been a huge animal person. So very often, it, you know, even when I'm doing the shoot, whether it's a celebrity or the people on the set, I'm, I'm going to have to go and say, stop touching the puppy. Because everyone's disappeared. We're holding puppy, feeding puppy, laughing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, everybody loves the animals. And so I have to ask you as well, the moment you have the animals, the environment <laughs> is so different, right? Yeah, it is. And it's very important to understand that when you say the star in the calendar, the stars are the doggies. Yeah, we've been saying that on our yeah. Twitter page as well. Twitter that Twitter. real star of the Vivek Oberoi shoot or real, yeah. Is, is the doggy. Is the dog. Alright, guess what's going to happen now? We have the rapid fire round. So we've got some que questions which are incredible. You know you're competing against each other, right? Oh my god, don't do that. <laughs> All right. No, it's really simple questions, don't worry. Okay. What's the one cause that animals would fight for if they could really speak? Your thing. Uh, being out of cages. Being out of cages? No zoos. No zoos. Vegetarianism, hey, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Vegetarianism, I think. That's actually a good part. No cages, not on the plate. I like that. Okay. Now you have to tell me. What is the term for a group of cats? Kaggle? Kovi? Clutch? Clouder? I really don't know. Kaggle. 
No, that's Okay, next question. Fast. Yeah. Kaggle. Yeah, you're absolutely wrong. It's the cloud here. <laughs> okay. Now, which Bollywood celebrity would be the best suited to endorse adoption of the following animals? Okay. A house fly. Who should adopt a house fly? Oh my god. Who should adopt a house fly? Who's vegetarian? Shahid Kapoor. Shahid Kapoor for a house fly because? Because he's vegetarian and very peace loving and shanti and all of them shanti. So what's the connection with the house fly? Just, just that he would like, you know, let it be, let it be, let it and be. not swat it away. Yeah, I hope. Okay, sure, I like that. <laughs> okay, lizard. I don't know. I should don't think it. anyone should adopt. It. No, I'm being so mean. for the lizards. I don't know why they never get any love. <laughs> the Pasha. The Pasha. Why? What? I don't know. I, I feel like lizards have a certain grace about them. It kind of goes. Especially just the way they you. fling their tail is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Well done. I like that. All right. So my. The beautiful little power that I have. So today's winner for the rapid fire is no, no, don't even think about it. <laughs> oh, yay! Thank you, thank you. It's all going to go to who you do. Know. Two, two. Here's the cool part: if you have a beautiful moment like that, if you have your pets with you, the only thing you need to really do is take out your camera, click it, and send it to us. We will play it on Bloggers Blog. Shiru is a dog with the demeanor of a lion. He loves to be in the company of bigger dogs and likes playing with the hamsters and rabbits. Sheru also loves to spend time outdoors and will tug on his pet parent's pants or hand him the leash when he wants to go out. Another lovely pet, Sponu, is a big fan of chocolates and pastries. He loves playing with children but barks at any adult who visits his pet parent Ophelia's house. He follows Ophelia's mother wherever she goes and doesn't like being alone at any time. If your pet is a star too, do send in the high resolution photographs and videos to pets at ndtvgoodtimes.com. We are waiting. Amongst the many other things, one of my favorite things on the show, of course, is the segment of to adopt, where literally you have this new lease of life that you can give to a really, really incredible animal. Whiskey has a story like that. Yeah, Whiskey, Whiskey came to us when he was in quite the pathetic state. Uh, he, someone had tied a string around his paw, uh, you know, things that people do to stray animals. And uh, so we picked him up, he was almost on the verge of losing his paw. And uh, I think he made quite the miraculous recovery. And ever since then, he's been uh, in one of our foster homes and uh, he's kind of been enjoying life. He's been waiting for a home for quite a long time now. It's been about six months, so we're desperately looking to home him. Uh, so yeah, that's about Whiskey. He's, he's, really, he's really gentle. He's kind of like a dog. In a cat's body. In a cat's I like body. That. I mean, look at that pretty face. He's such a happy baby. He's a <laughs> handsome little devil, isn't he? Don't you love it? Which is why we have opt to adopt. Opt to Adopt is an initiative by Heavy Petting All Stars to unite homeless pets with their pet loving families looking to adopt. Peanut is a super intelligent white and brown pup who is a quick learner. Scarface, a three month old gentle and loving puppy, likes chasing flies. The graceful Bella is full of life and very affectionate. Two month old puppies Simba and Biscuit are playful siblings and toilet trained. Sage, an abandoned Spitz mix, is looking for a family that he can call his own. All of these pets have been rescued by the NGO World for All. To adopt any of these loving animals, log on to our website www.goodtimes.ndtv.com slash heavypetting for details. Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching Heavy Petting. If you're thinking about adopting a pet, what do you think about? A lab, a Doberman or a Pomerian as people call it, Pomeranian. Please don't ever say Pomerian. But our celebrities will also tell you why adopting a stray actually is a brilliant idea. I think sometimes uh, uh, you make a connect with a stray dog. Like for me, when we were in Lonavla uh, at my farmhouse and just randomly a stray dog walked in and she decided that she was going to be part of our family and the house was more hers than anybody else's and she was just beautiful, she was faithful, she was uh, incredibly resilient. Um, there's, there's something about how sharp they are, how smart they are. They're extremely, if I could put it, street smart, you know, I mean, while a pedigree dog would uh, have a certain sense of discipline, gait and, you know, could win medals and, you know, go to cups and contests and stuff like that. But when you look at a stray dog in terms of just the tricks they do, the way they communicate with you, the way they understand, um, the relationships that they build with you, um, that is pretty incredible and um, I, I totally would tell people to go out there and adopt a stray dog. I have a stray in my other house, yes. Yes. And I, I have think seven strays actually outside my house in Bandra. Yeah, we have a bunch, they're like a gang actually, they're a gang. 
and every time like my doggy goes for a walk now she's a part of the gang but when i just got my dog which i have right now they used to come and like give her this whole look going on like who are you and in our territory but now my doggy's become a stray with them she doesn't want to stay <laughs> home with the normal doggy she wants to run with a them a dog with a breed has become a stray, stray dog yeah. <laughs> she enjoys it more yeah 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 <laughs> Educated guess or expert medical opinion if you are sitting on the fence which i can't do because i'm fat and the fence would break you have to only ask dr omesh this is ask the doc hi this is dr omesh welcome to ask the doc preeti from jalandhar as a query on our coughing dog preeti's 9 year old miniature pomeranian has been coughing constantly she seeks advice hi preeti The dog which has a cough which is not responding to conventional medical treatment might have a, a chronic problem. The some causes may be chronic bronchitis, the cardiac diseases or the diseases of chest. Considering the age and the breed of your dog is more likely that your dog may be suffering from airway collapse which is otherwise called tracheal collapse. The dog is unable to breathe normally and start coughing and it may produce a sound similar to the goose honk or the seal bark. However, you should also consider other diseases as well, including the cardiac problem. So, your vet may advise chest radiograph, some blood test, as well as ECG to find the underlying cause. If it is airway collapse, I would definitely recommend surgical intervention. Wow! Let's get your mind racing now. The contest question for this week is: How fast does a cheetah run? The fastest animal on four legs is the cheetah. How fast can it run? At 200 kilometers an hour, at 400 kilometers an hour, or perhaps is it 100 kilometers an hour? SMS your answers A B or C to 56388. There are pedigree gifts waiting just for you. Last week we asked you, from which animal is Morocco leather derived? The answer: a goat. Fine pebble grain leather, originally made in Morocco from goat skin tanned with sumac, is used for book binding. When produced well, Morocco goat skins are durable, flexible, beautifully grained, and relatively strong. Morocco leather is always dyed, traditionally available in red, black, green, or brown colors, but now also available in many other colors. True Persian Morocco leather is produced from Indian or East Indian goat skins. Hi right, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I had so much fun. So did we? Thank you. Now we have a tradition on the show. Whichever guest comes to give us the loudest bark ever they can manage. Okay? On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Look, we started a tradition today. Nobody else has done that before. <laughs> thank you so much. That was nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to you as well. We will see you next time. <laughs> bye bye.